Hello, my name is Tom Gazelle. I'm a faculty member in health physics here at Idaho State University. I also serve as a spokesperson for the Phosphorus Slag Technical Work Group. In 1992, FMC, Monsanto, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency joined to form the Slag Technical Work Group. This work group was formed to develop guidelines to help people understand the results of measurements of exposure from slag and also to help them understand what, if anything, should be done to reduce their exposure. The technical work group is composed of individuals from the communities, industry, and the agencies. Residents in Southeast Idaho can now participate in a voluntary program. It's being conducted jointly by the District Health Department, FMC, uh, Monsanto, and EPA. The program will allow residents to find out if uh, phosphorus slag in their homes or businesses is causing unacceptably high levels of radiation exposure. This video is produced to help people understand the program and learn how to participate in it. What is phosphorus slag? Phosphorus slag is a byproduct of the phosphorus industry, an important industry which contributes to our regional economy. Elemental phosphorus is produced from a mixture of phosphate ore, silica, and coke. The largest remaining byproduct is a lava-like rock known as slag. Primarily a compound of calcium and silica, phosphorus slag also contains small quantities of uranium and radium, which occur naturally in the phosphate ore. Their presence in phosphorus slag causes it to emit low levels of gamma radiation. How has phosphorus slag been used? Phosphorus slag has been used historically in southeast Idaho for construction purposes in concrete and asphalt, roadbed fill, backfill, and railroad ballast. In the 1950s, 60s, and early 70s, it was also used in the concrete poured for some basements and building foundations. Why is phosphorus slag a concern? Phosphorus slag is a concern because it emits gamma radiation, a form of radiation that is similar to x-rays. At certain levels, gamma radiation has been linked to an increased risk of developing cancer. Frankly, no one is suggesting that people in southeast Idaho have high cancer rates. Indeed, area residents are quite healthy compared to people who live in other parts of the country. Participation in the phosphorus slag program will help area residents determine if they are being exposed to higher than expected levels of radiation and provide an opportunity for them to reduce their exposure. I want to know right now if there's slag in my home. I want to know exactly how much radiation I'm being exposed to. I don't want people all over inside my house if I don't have slag. Can I still participate? Just how does all this work? The voluntary program is designed to determine if phosphorus slag has been used in your home or business property, as well as measure the radiation dose of individuals living and working in buildings where phosphorus slag is found. Participation in the program is free, and it takes very little of your time. There are two ways to participate in the program. One involves a screening of your home or business. The other involves wearing a thermoluminescent dosimeter, or TLD. But rather than tell you about the program, let's show you how it works. We will demonstrate how homes are screened for elevated radiation levels. We will also show you the process that is used to evaluate individual radiation exposure using TLDs. For people who want to know right now if there is slag in their homes, we suggest you participate in the home screening. Before you start, can you tell me more about what you're going to do today? With your permission, we will be measuring radiation levels in your home. We will be looking for radiation levels that are higher than what is expected for this area. Should we find elevated levels, that may mean you have phosphorus slag in your home. This meter reads radiation. We'll need to take some readings here on the main floor and down to the basement if you have one. We can take our first reading right in this room. The meter reads 18 microrem per hour here. So now you need to take a measurement in my basement? Yes, please. The meter reads 15 microrem per hour down here. Our measurements do not indicate that you have significant levels of radiation in your home. 
Here is a statement of our findings. What if you had found slag in my home? Then we would recommend that you request follow-up measurements so that we can determine the doses to the members of your household. Now, to answer the question about how much radiation you are being exposed to, let's show you a thermoluminescent dosimeter. A TLD is an instrument that measures exactly how much radiation a person is being exposed to. People who do not want to have their homes surveyed might want to use a TLD instead. You can make an appointment to pick up a TLD by calling the Phosphorus Slag Information Line. During your appointment, you'll be given a demonstration for proper use of the TLD. Hello, I'm Michelle Hall. Welcome to the District Health Department. This is a thermoluminescent dosimeter. As you can see, it is small enough to be worn as a key ring, which is how we recommend you wear it. The TLD will measure the total radiation you are being exposed to. It needs to be worn for a period of three months to ensure accurate measures. Does this mean I have to wear it in my sleep? No, but it does mean you need to have it with you at all times. We recommend you put it on a bedside table while you sleep. What will the information from the TLD tell me? The TLD will provide an accurate measure of your total radiation dose. After three months, you need to return the TLD to the District Health Department. We will have it processed and mail you your results within three weeks. How do I make the choice to have my home screened or to wear a TLD? That choice is entirely up to you. Some people like the home screening because it only takes a few minutes. Others want to know exactly how much radiation they are being exposed to and don't mind wearing the TLD for three months. And you don't necessarily have to choose. You can participate in the program both ways. Initial home screening or a TLD indicates that you may have elevated exposure to radiation. More extensive measurements will be recommended. If I participate in the program, what will the results tell me? No matter which way you participate, the program will tell you if you have elevated exposure to radiation. The Phosphorus Slag Technical Work Group has developed a set of guidelines to help residents make decisions based on the results of the program. The Technical Work Group's recommendations include a range of things that can be done to reduce residents' exposure to radiation from slag. They include attrition, or removing the slag once the structure's useful life has ended, alterations in how the family uses their home, and building additional living space to replace areas that contribute to elevated radiation doses. After you get the results, the District Health Department will provide information to you, including the Technical Work Group's guidelines. What you do to reduce your exposure to radiation, if anything, will be entirely up to you. How much does it cost to participate in the program? There is no cost for participating. What if I want to reduce my exposure according to the technical work group guidelines? Who will pay for that? FMC and Monsanto will pay. Who else will be given the results of the survey of my property? No one. The results will be kept confidential. Program results will be reported in aggregate only. For example, we might provide statistics on how many properties have been evaluated and what the overall results have been. The demonstration focused on homes. Can I have my business property screened? Yes, any building in Southeast Idaho can be included in the program. My home was built in 1988. Should I still participate in the program? While homes built in the 1980s and 90s are less likely to have phosphorus slag in them than homes built in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, we can't guarantee that they do not. If you want to know for sure whether or not your home has slag in it, you're welcome to participate in the study. I wear a TLD at work because I'm exposed to radiation as part of my job. Should I wear the TLD for the phosphorus slag program to work as well? Yes, this program is designed to assess total exposure to radiation, including radiation doses received at work and doses received at home. Subtracting the radiation dose you receive at work from the total dose measured by the TLD will help determine how much radiation you are being exposed to at home. If you were to leave the TLD at home, it would only tell you what radiation dose you would receive if you stayed at home all the time. I still have lots of questions about this program. Where can I find out more about it? This video provides more information. If you continue watching, it will provide background information on the various kinds of radiation and on radon, another form of radiation that is found in houses and in business properties. 
What is radiation? Some atoms, known as radionuclides, are unstable or radioactive. Radionuclides undergo a spontaneous decay process and emit one or more types of radiation until they reach a stable form. There are three main types of radiation, alpha radiation, beta radiation, and gamma radiation, which is very similar to x-rays. The EPA is concerned about the gamma radiation, which is emitted by phosphorus slag. Gamma radiation consists of electromagnetic waves, which can penetrate skin and travel through the human body. Naturally, radioactive materials in the Earth, primarily uranium, thorium, radium, radon, and potassium, and cosmic rays from outer space, immerse us in fluctuating amounts of radiation at all times. Background radiation varies by location and results from a combination of cosmic radiation and naturally occurring radiation in the Earth. The phosphorus slag program looks for buildings where radiation levels exceed the expected background level. In addition to such naturally occurring sources of radiation, people are exposed to manufactured sources of radiation as well, including medical applications, consumer goods, and the operation of the nuclear power industry. Medical doctors use man-made radiation for diagnosis and treatment of cancer and other diseases. Of the total amount of radiation that the average person in the United States is exposed to every year, 82% comes from natural sources and 18% from non-natural sources. Medical uses of radiation account for more than 90% of the average annual dose from non-natural sources. Despite the benefits of radiation in our modern world, increases in exposure to radiation have been linked to increases in cancer rates. For that reason, the phosphorus slag program seeks to reduce exposure to radiation for residents of southeast Idaho. What about radon? Residents in southeast Idaho may experience elevated radiation doses in their homes and business properties from many sources. The primary focus of the phosphorus slag program is on gamma radiation from phosphorus slag that has been used as a building material in many area buildings. Some buildings may also have elevated radiation as a result of radon. Radon is an invisible, odorless gas and a natural part of the environment. It will be important to know the level of radiation resulting from radon in addition to that resulting from phosphorus slag so that appropriate measures can be taken to protect the resident's health. Because of this, property owners participating in the program may also have their buildings surveyed for radon. Well, our time is about up, but if this video hasn't answered all your questions, please call the toll-free number for more information.